what does a development director actually do when when I was like starting at this out um, before we actually work with Susan and AJP to hire our current uh, development director. Um, you know, we I spoke to a lot, a number of development directors to try and figure out what the job description would be, and I learned that you know most development teams there's people that are focused on major gifts, there's people that are focused on philanthropy, on um, foundations, sorry, you know corporations, membership. So you really have to have a clear idea of the type of person you're looking for. And, you know, some development roles even expand beyond that. Um, so yeah, I'd love it, Kaylin, if you would chime in maybe about what, what is what does a development director actually do? Yes, so I think it um, primarily will stem from what phase of development the organization is in. Um, and so organizations are at different stages um, in their own development. So if we're at a position where, you know, the founder was doing um, most of the fundraising, making most of the connections, had the majority of the relationships, then I think it's really important to just level set in terms of we need to actually have systems and processes in place that will support um, the infrastructure and the technology required um, to actually do more robust and sophisticated fundraising. And so, um, you know, I always say that um, fundraising is like the last thing you do. Um, you first have to have a culture of philanthropy, um, and then you have to also have the systems and the processes, what, what we call development in place. Um, so you need standard operating procedures and you need policies about, you know, what gifts we'll receive and what we do with this you know, gift acceptance and, and all of that. Um, and so a lot of times we want to skip right to asking for money when, you know, the infrastructure is not in place yet. So, um, you know, it just depends on what stage of development the organization is in um, as to, to what the development director will really be um, needed to do. Absolutely. Is anyone else want to add to that? Well, uh, yeah, so, um, you know, a lot of, we're talking about founders too and very entrepreneurial organizations. So, you know, in any, there's not a lot of big planning to get something off the ground, you know? So the founder is very opportunistic and gotten, has gotten some money in the door, but that might not be where the next tranche of money will come from. And so, you know, to understand where, our strategy in terms of what are the target segments? Are we going after individual giving? Is it philanth philanthropy? Like you said, because the type of development director or, do, or development manager, maybe you don't need a director who at that level, but you need someone who's really good at grants because that's where your money is going to come from. Or if you're in a situation where it's going to be more individual giving, which is going to get you to the next level, you need to look for a development um, executive who has that experience. So sometimes even at the front end, as you go from startup to institutionalizing and what Lolly was saying, putting processes in places and Kaylin was saying, you know, we need to institutionalize this now. It's not so opportunistic anymore. Sometimes getting a consultant in to do a feasibility study to really look at the context, look at what your organizational mission is and where the opportunity is. And then that can translate into, okay, do you need a director or do we need a manager with a particular expertise and start to hone who you need to come on board. I would also say, you know, also the founder, is the founder a good, you know, development? So often founders are the chief development officers because they're charismatic, they have this thing, but sometimes people are not. So the partnership with the founder is really important. And then if there's a board, the board, the partnership with the board too, because the board should really be helping with fundraising as well. So I just added a little bits of many things, but it's like thinking about all these things, but I don't think it's a bad idea for people to do some feasibility analysis before they go out there, because a lot of times the expectations are, okay, we need to raise money now. We need to raise a lot more money. We'll hire someone and they'll take care of it. And I think people have alluded to it. You know, you need to put process, 
um, people churn in development positions a lot because the boards and the founders or the executive directors don't, they're not realistic or they don't really understand what is actually possible. So that's where I think front end research to really look at what is possible and not get like blue skies and they're just kind of the silver bullet when this person comes in. We've all seen that. Mm -hmm.